Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I'm Chris. We are getting close to fantasy football drafts, the NFL season, a little more than a week away. I want to continue looking at players that we like given where they're going in 2022 fantasy football drafts. It's an annual list that I do. It is flag players. There are 10 of them. We are linking right now somewhere on this screen to a video in which I count down numbers 10 through 6 on my flag list. And our job today is to talk about numbers 5 through 1. So let's get going. At number 5, we'll kick it off with Christian Kirk who was a darling of people who love to make young, unproven players darlings just a few short years ago. But this is what happens. The people who overrate young players move on. They've always got a new generation of young players to hype, and they forget about the guys they used to love. Kirk has fallen almost completely outside the top 100 in fantasy drafts overall, meaning that's the second half of your draft. People were disappointed by him in Arizona. They don't like the landing spot in Jacksonville. And of course, I'm not saying that I'm positive that Kirk will be great catching passes from Trevor Lawrence in a Jags offense that has a lot of unknowns, to be kind. But I can show you why I think Kirk is well-placed to have a strong volume kind of season. We're showing you here a few Cardinals plays where Kirk lines up as an outside receiver. And he didn't always get an amazing release. Really fast, he's really quick. The Cardinals initially viewed him mostly as an outside player. You can even see on the third one here, he makes the catch, but certainly not the result of great separation at the snap. Last year, Arizona turned Kirk into much more of a slot receiver to take pressure off of him on the outside. He responded really well. You can see he doesn't need to beat a man off the snap as frequently. And a couple of these are shots down the field. Christian Kirk is very good at knowing where to go based on what the defense is doing as long as he can see it. He finds open space. He's fast. He can make plays after the catch. So do I know exactly what Jacksonville has in mind for Kirk? I don't. But I suspect the Jags added Kirk precisely because they did not have enough smart receivers last year who knew when to power down against zone or who were explosive enough to make deep plays up the middle out of the slot. I'm going to take Kirk as early as the sixth round in my ranks, but it sure is looking like in drafts you can wait a lot longer than that. So don't take him in the sixth. Wait till the eighth. Hey, without DraftKings, this video wouldn't be possible. Great sponsor. Football's basically here. College season starts Saturday with all the big name schools playing the NFL just a few days further behind. If you've been thinking about finding a place to play the games, DraftKings is great. They have a cool promotion. When you place a $5 bet on any game, you'll get $200 in free bets added to your account instantly. It's a fun way to get a bankroll. DraftKings gives you a bunch of ways to play. Same game parlays, lots of futures, lots of point spreads, but you can't play if you don't have the app. And if you download the app, please do sign up with our code HarrisTube. That's how they know that advertising with our channel works. That's how the channel keeps going. Plus, it'll get you $200 in free bets when you make your first $5 bet or more. Having a couple bucks on a game that you're watching anyway makes it more fun. So if you'd like to, go get that DraftKings Sportsbook app. And please remember, use our code HarrisTube. All right, let's get back to the flag players. Number four on the list. Well, it's a familiar name. He was on the list last year as well. I just really like Carolina Panthers receiver DJ Moore. Let's take a look. What we're showing you here is a montage of all of DJ Moore's touchdowns from 2022, and you better not blink because you might miss them. We are going to run out of them before I am done talking about DJ Moore. He only had four touchdowns in 2021. That sounds crazy enough for a really good player. In fact, in his entire four-year NFL career, Moore has two, four, four, and four touchdowns. And that right there is weird because Moore has 301 receptions over the past four seasons. That's 13th in the entire NFL over that time. And every receiver in the top 27 in receptions in that span has more touchdowns than DJ Moore does. I think that's the reason that people get down on DJ Moore for fantasy. I just don't believe it's anything inherent about him. He's a great route runner. He's ferocious at the point of the catch. He's just a baller. And I know Baker Mayfield doesn't sound great for a fantasy wideout, but compare him to, you know, Kyle Allen and Teddy Bridgewater and late stage Cam Newton. I'm firmly a believer that eventually touchdowns arrive for good players. The market is telling you more as a late fourth round pick at that price. I am super happy to plant a flag on him and have him be my number two wide receiver for fantasy. I think the touchdowns eventually arrive. 
At number three on the flag list, well, I don't think there are too many arguments against Alvin Kamara's talent, but of course, there's residual effect from his legal troubles this offseason, and that's causing people to draft him quite, a, quite unlike we would normally draft Alvin Kamara. Everybody started off the season ranking Kamara with lots of added risk because, you know, it seemed like it was going to happen. He was going to be suspended for punching a guy in an elevator at the Pro Bowl. And yeah, that sounds like a setup for a joke, but in fact, it actually happened. Kamara is still eventually probably facing a suspension at some point, but right now, with his case delayed far into the season, for me, it consensus seems to be that Kamara has a good chance to evade his suspension this year. And if you believe that, then the fact that Kamara is still going outside the first round of every fantasy draft just seems weird to me. He's still great. He might be the most explosive back in the league. He's proven year after year that he doesn't need anything close to 30 touches a game to give you a dominant fantasy season, and he's only 27 years old. Under normal circumstances, wouldn't everyone have Kamara ranked as a top five overall player? Like, wouldn't he be right up there with Dalvin Cook? And sure, there is still some degree of risk that a suspension is coming, but how much are we penalizing him? I can't get him out of the first round. So I guess the flag list item here is that if you're picking toward the end of your first round, boy, I am mighty tempted to take Kamara. Take on the risk. Know that I'll have a great first half of the season at minimum. Build up a good fantasy record. And then I guess if it comes down the road, then I lose the bet. Uh, but I, I just think at this point, it doesn't feel that likely to happen. And I'm drafting Alvin Kamara. At number two on the flag list... Let's go to the other end of our drafts. If you've been watching the channel for at least a year, you've definitely heard me say Khalil Herbert's name before. I think he might already be the Bears' best running back. And no, I don't actually think things will shake out that way in 2022. David Montgomery's still around. He's still a tough dude, and he's a leader on Chicago's team as long as he's healthy. I don't have any reason to expect Khalil Herbert is going to pass him on the depth chart. I also don't really need him to at the price he's going for. Herbert gets drafted in the 13th or 14th round. Sometimes he doesn't get drafted at all in redraft fantasy leagues. At that price, I love hanging on to Herbert as a fantasy bench player just to see what happens. When Montgomery was injured for a few weeks last year, Herbert flashed great ability, good size, great lateral agility, good acceleration. I watch him play. I see a starting running back in the league. Among all the pure backup running backs in the NFL, Herbert might just be the best right now. I compare this to what I was telling you last year, that Tony Pollard was Dallas's best running back, and now Pollard's like a sixth-round pick. Herbert won't be that expensive this year. Can't tell you what the future holds for Montgomery, but on the flag list, I'm trying to give you a wide range of players in all sorts of different rounds that you can take a shot on. My favorite late round pick, basically in all fantasy drafts this year, just might be Khalil Herbert. And my number one flag player this year, I've got Michael Thomas. I don't understand it. I think the market is just missing something here. I'll make my case, but the bottom line is I think Michael Thomas is well worth the risk of the fifth or even sixth round pick that he's costing you in drafts. I will start here. If Michael Thomas hadn't missed the better part of two seasons, where would he be ranked? Okay, he wouldn't have Drew Brees. That's a fair point. So maybe we wouldn't call him the number one receiver in fantasy. The way we did just two years ago, fine. He's got Jameis Winston and that's not as good. But don't we think Jameis Winston has produced some fantasy worthy receivers in the past? Look at the other elite receivers who's changed quarterbacks. We're punishing Devonta Adams a little. We're punishing Tyreek Hill a little. Is Jameis way worse for fantasy receivers than Derek Carr and Tua Tunga-Vailoa? No. And at their lowest, Adams and Hill are going in the second round, not the fifth or the sixth like Thomas. So don't give me the lack of breeze for why Thomas is falling so low. So it has to be the ankle, right? It's the fact that he missed all this time after ankle surgery? Absolutely. He should be downgraded from his peak because of this, because there is some level of risk Thomas just is never going to be the same guy, though all observers of Saints camp have said that Thomas looks great. How much risk is there? Is there really four rounds worth of risk? That seems crazy to me. Christian McCaffrey's basically missed the exact same amount of time, and I would argue that a continued series of strains and pulls on a small guy who's bulked up is more concerning than a receiver who had his ankle fallen on from behind. And people are arguing to take McCaffrey number one overall. I feel like I have a head wound. Thomas did pull a hamstring late in training camp. I get it. Everyone tells us it's nothing. Maybe it's not. People are panicking. I do not understand this price 
on one of the most technically sound dominators in the middle of the field. I think we're going to look back on Michael Thomas not going in the first 60 players in a fantasy draft this year and feel really, really silly. Now, this doesn't mean you should be taking Michael Thomas in your second round or your third round. You're going to get him maybe in the sixth, at least in the fifth. If you feel nervous about it in the late fourth, I could see taking him just to make sure if you want to get him. I just think the value is crazy. We're going to look back and think that was a really great price. You know what the market's doing. You don't have to totally reach for him, just a little bit. I think, you know, taking a risk, but I think Michael Thomas could be very, very good for fantasy teams this year. But I'm interested in what you think. Well, first of all, I'm sure you're going to yell at me about Michael Thomas the way you yell at me about other guys. <laughs> That's fine down in the comments. But really what I want to know is in your drafts, as you do mocks and stuff like that, who do you keep winding up with? Who do you think is extreme value? Tell us down in the comments. I'll check them out. I'm very curious to see what you think. Good luck with your drafts. Try to have some fun. Don't stress out too much. We can fix those teams no matter what once we get in season. Have a good time. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Please, please, please smash that like button. Write a comment. Tell us who else you'd like to see us review film on. And of course, best of all, please subscribe to our channel and then click that little bell above the subscribe button and you'll be notified whenever we post a new video.